A few years ago, SWAT Magazine and I embarked on a project to bring the world-class trainers that we cover in the magazine to the TV screen and let you understand how they train the military, law enforcement, and security professionals and how you can apply their training to your personal home and family defense. The project was a great success and we ran for two full seasons on air. Now we're bringing you the lost episodes of SWAT Magazine TV. Thanks to the support and sponsorship of Crossbreed Holsters and through the production and distribution power of the Personal Defense Network, SWAT Magazine TV is back and we've still got the world-class, top-level trainers of security, military, and law enforcement professionals bringing you tips and techniques that can help you in the worst-case scenarios that you prepare for in terms of your personal, home, and family defense. SWAT Magazine TV is all about professional information and how you can apply it to your personal life. I hope you enjoy these lost episodes brought to you by Crossbreed Holsters, SWAT Magazine, and the Personal Defense Network. Being an armed citizen means having a gun with you all the time. Carrying a firearm every day requires a holster that is both concealable and comfortable. Whether you choose our Super Tuck Deluxe or Mini Tuck, you'll have the confidence that comes from being discreetly and comfortably armed, prepared to face unforeseen dangers. Crossbreed holsters are handmade in the USA, come with a lifetime warranty and a two-week try-it-free guarantee. Order your holster today at crossbreedholsters.com. In this first of the lost episodes of SWAT Magazine TV, we're going to be going to San Marcos, Texas, to the Alert Training Facility. The Alert Training Facility specializes in what we've known as active shooter situations. I prefer to call them school attacker situations because the reality is shooting isn't a bad thing, but attacking schools and attacking children certainly is. The Alert Facility training staff is among the nation's leaders in preparing law enforcement professionals to deal with these school attacks, whether they involve armed people or unarmed people. They also provide information to students and teachers, and that's what you're going to see at the end of this lost episode. And remember, with SWAT Magazine TV online, we're not beholden to the normal time frames of regular television. So the last segment is especially long so that you can see all the details of exactly what the alert staff recommend to children and teachers that may be trapped in an actual school attack situation. Watch it with your family, share it with your friends. This is an important lost episode of SWAT Magazine TV. There are a plethora of AR-15 type rifles out there on the market. 
This is my first time getting to practice with the LWRC Tricon M6. This particular rifle has had over 10,000 rounds on it, never been cleaned, and as you can see, it's still working just fine for me. Let's go to the designer of this rifle, Jeff Gonzalez of Trident Concepts, and find out what makes it so special. Where we wanted to start was by lightening the rifle. And the first thing that we did was we took the barrel and we applied this spiral fluting to it. By applying the spiral fluting, what that allowed us to do was reduce the barrel's weight by about 20%, which is pretty significant, without compromising any of its performance attributes. After that, the next thing we wanted to do was to try to make the rifle interface with the shooter better. We wanted it to become a part. We wanted the shooter and the rifle to basically be one. So a lot of the accoutrements that we looked at were the stock, the grip, and the vertical foregrip. So with the stock, we wanted to choose a stock that gave the shooter a really nice cheek wheel, a good shoulder pocket, the whole ball of wax. And the SOP Mod stock met that criteria very well. Uh, using it within the Navy, it was a great, great addition, so it just seemed natural to go here with it. From there, the pistol grip. We wanted a pistol grip that allowed the shooter to really choke up on that grip and really suck it into his shoulder pocket and this uh, Myad grip does that job very well. And then the vertical foregrip, we didn't really need a lot of weight here so we chose to go with a stubby version of it that allowed us to cut a little bit of weight without you know cutting too much of that surface area so the shooter can still get a really good purchase on that vertical foregrip. All those allow the shooter to just bring that weapon system nice and tight into their, in, into their body or their shooting stance. Um, after that, we started to look at stuff like uh, backup iron sights, you know, uh, a more aggressive charging handle, and then a lot of work goes on the inside that's really difficult to see. We really did a lot of work uh, to, you know, to make it either function under more arduous conditions through different types of coatings or just through design features that allowed it to be more reliable under extended use type uh, conditions. So you know, our goal was to create a hard use utility rifle that is going to be just that. It's going to get a lot of use out of it. We want to see the shooters taking it out there and putting it through its paces. We're very confident in how this thing's going to work, so we don't expect it to be a prize that you see in a, in a safe. We expect it to be, you know, out there getting dirty, getting used, getting worn. Something like this. So hopefully you'll see the same thing in the rifle. I get to meet a lot of people involved in the shooting industry and a lot of people are designing firearms for our use. The fact is, there's no better source than someone who's actually used one of these when it counts and someone who teaches people just like me and you how to use the rifles when it comes to rifle design. So I'm really glad that Jeff got to share some of his insight and the things that he thinks are important about the Tricon M6. I'm going to get back to practice. The mission alert program is to get high quality training out to our first responders uh, and do it at no cost to them. Uh, our vision from day one of this program has always been to get this training out and utilize the, the federal and state grant money so it doesn't cost agencies or officers anything to get this kind of training that's desperately needed. And in, down that ramp, good deal. We, we talk about the patrol officer, the actual officers out on the street that are going to be the ones answering 911 call. So when a mass shooting occurs, whether it be in a school, a law, a terrorist event, or whatever triggers that event, the first ones that are going to be there are the ones in the radio cars uh, that get the dispatch from the 911 center saying, go respond, your shot's fired. That's our target audience. You know, there's a lot of great programs out there, and we, we're very blessed to consider ourselves one of those programs. I, I think there's a couple things that set our program alert aside from the others. Uh, one is we absolutely believe in core belief is force on force training. You cannot learn active shooter response doing a tabletop exercise. Is there a need for that? Absolutely there's a need for that kind of exercise and testing. But to learn basic fundamental skills you actually have to do it and you have to do it under stress and you have to do it with force on force training. So that's one of our our foundations that we have is this force on force training. Um, we also stay very busy. There's no downtime in our classes. Uh, there, there is no time to get bored. We keep people moving all the time and we always have the same in our class. It's like drinking water out of a fire hydrant. We're trying to throw so much information at you. 
And then probably the third one is we have a research component uh, with our program. We have a PhD professor assigned to us from Texas State University that actually we research some of the things we teach. Uh, the one we're doing currently is room entries. Uh, you know, the, the biggest debates in the tactical world often is which way is the first guy going room entry. So we're put into test. Uh, we're using uh, students from Texas State University, we're using uh, police officers to come in and we're setting up cameras and we're actually testing it in empirical research to see, okay, in this environment, which way works, in that environment, which way works, and then we'll publish that out into, put it right back into the field and let folks see what, okay, this is not just my guess of my personal preference of how it's the best, but this is shown empirically research, this works best. Here's what we came in looking for, here's what we found. Do they match? If they don't, how long are we gonna sit in this room? Maybe not much longer. What we've taught from day one, but now we really hammer home even more now, is that don't get yourself boxed in that active shooters only happen in schools. This can happen anywhere, and our first responders have to be ready to train, what we call train to the hardest standard. Don't train to the person that's gonna go into a school and shoot it up and then commit suicide when they see you coming. Train to the standard of the Mumbai attackers that are trained terrorists that are gonna fight you to the death. And you have to be one, you have to train to the standard to go back and fight them and be willing to take a losses on our side. And that's a, that's a rude awakening for a lot of civilian law enforcement. Uh, but we're trying to do it through our training is, is get people's minds right before this comes to America. It's bleeding out! That's hey, turn it, get on. Texas State University is the flagship of this program. Uh, we would not be where we're at law enforcement wise. We would not be where we're at today without them. And it was nice to have a university of that size actually get down in the weeds and realize the importance of first responder training and being on the cutting edge of that kind of training across the nation. These are all things, complex issues we need to work on, okay? Next group, you're up. What's the best choice for home defense? Rifle, pistol, or maybe a shotgun? Let's see what our experts have to say. From my point of view, I would choose a handgun. And um, the primary reason behind that is that we have, you know, we still have some younglings in our home and, and it's very difficult to try to rustle and hold and carry and tote with a long arm, whether it be a rifle or a shotgun, no matter how light or short barrel the, those items are. Handgun gives a lot more maneuverability, uh, just ease of carry uh, for other items that you might have to carry. Uh, and in confined spaces, you know, it, it, could be a, it could be a huge advantage. Shotgun. And I think a shotgun is probably two two prong approach with a shotgun. The mere chambering of the of the shotgun probably is going to get most people to get out of your your house. Um, but if you're like my wife, um, you don't want them to leave. <laughs> you want to know who's in there and why, and you don't want them to leave. Uh, I think you're probably going to take your marginal person shooter who's going to invest a little bit of time to uh, know the weapon system, and they can be pretty accurate with that weapon system. But you don't you can select a certain type of round and not over penetrate as well. Shotgun. Uh, shotgun for home defense is just uh, amazing. Uh, shotguns are one of the best close quarters battle weapons that are out there. Uh, they immediately place fear in a person's heart. Uh, you talk to some of our troops that are overseas right now and they'll tell you that the minute that they start cutting loose with a shotgun, uh, they start uh, seeing people run the other direction. For me, I would have to say pistol. Um, with the technology we have out there today, you know, from the Crimson Trace type stuff, you know, for me personally, um, in, you know, in a panic, you know, the different types of rounds, you know, there used to be a theory about over penetration. Well, the technology today is, is vastly improved. So, you know, with Crimson Trace, uh, the, the light mounted stuff, you know, it depends on if an intruder is at my house at night. Well, then for sure, it's definitely a pistol with a bunch of gear on it, but not out of control gear. You know, the simple stuff from lasers to light mounted stuff, that's what I would go with. I like a pistol. Just because the pistol is a little more compact, um, easy, for me it's easier to control. I don't have to worry about anybody grabbing a barrel. Uh, weapon retention is a big thing in that kind of situation. So I would, I would say a pistol. I, I prefer the pistol because it's easy to get to in my house. I don't leave a rifle laying around as often as I would have a pistol accessible. Um, I do like the fact with the rifle that I don't have the over penetration issues that I may have with a shotgun or with the pistol. And a lot of people are going to disagree with that, but if you actually look at the penetration capabilities, the rifle versus the shotgun versus the pistol, you're going to be amazed that the rifle has the least amount of over penetration problems that you're going to deal with. All of them. Have them all and loaded. 
and accessible. When we come back to the lost episodes of SWAT Magazine TV, we're going to see how the alert training staff can prepare just a handful of students to defeat an armed attacker. Get that gun! Get the gun! Grab it! Grab it. Being an armed citizen means having a gun with you all the time. Carrying a firearm every day requires a holster that is both concealable and comfortable. Whether you choose our Super Tuck Deluxe or Mini Tuck, you'll have the confidence that comes from being discreetly and comfortably armed, prepared to face unforeseen dangers. Crossbreed holsters are handmade in the USA, come with a lifetime warranty and a two-week try-it-free guarantee. Order your holster today at crossbreedholsters.com. Your information is fantastic, but also um, as a civilian, it's interesting to look at it. Uh, I'm more likely to run into a situation where guns are being fired if I, you know, where police are there and maybe I just happen to be in the vicinity. It gives me an idea so that when I see the police moving and transitioning, I know what they're doing. I know for obvious reasons why I need to stay out of the way and not interfere with what they're doing. Welcome to Personal Defense Network. For years, we've been the internet's leading destination for high quality information on equipment, training, and your preparation for personal or home defense. Our videos are meant for those who are serious about enhancing their ability to use efficient techniques to survive a dynamic critical incident. But now we've stepped things up even higher. We've added hours of high quality training videos just for our premium members. This content takes the body of work that is the Personal Defense Network up to an even higher level. We've got the same types of experts that you're used to seeing, the people who know not only what to teach, but also how to teach, and most specifically, how to convey that information to you efficiently with premium online content. This is simply the best stuff you can find on the web. So how do you get started as a premium member? Simple. First, choose the plan that suits you. You can either pay monthly or sign up for a whole year in advance. Then you're gonna find categories of videos that are meant exclusively for you to help enhance your preparation for personal defense. Let's go inside and take a look. On the categories page, you'll find that all of our topics are organized in a way that makes sense so that you can easily find the information you're looking for. Once you go to a specific category, you'll see our normal short length video tips. You'll also see step-by-step -step drills with written instructions, as well as full length courses that are designed to help you learn as efficiently as you can with the time you've got. And of course, as you've come to expect from the Personal Defense Network, we're always adding new information. We're constantly out taping and collecting video with experts from around the world that you can find inside of your premium membership. And the best thing, you'll be able to take this membership with you with a smartphone, mobile device, or simply log in at whatever computer you happen to be by. Our goal with the Personal Defense Network is simple, provide you with the highest quality video learning tips that are available. You'll find them inside of the premium membership. All you have to do is choose how to get started, monthly or annually, and I'll see you on the inside. Welcome back, SWAT Magazine TV. All right, group, thanks for coming out and helping us out this, this afternoon. Uh, the next portion we're gonna talk about is something that happens prior to law enforcement or uh, rescue forces even getting on the scene. And the people that are involved in these incidents actually are involved before we get there. They're the people inside the schools, they're the people inside the shopping mall, the, um, the uh, restaurant. Uh, office building, wherever these take place. Uh, what can they do before we show up and we start trying to take control and take charge of the scene? So we're going to go over an acronym we used. Uh, it started off trying to explain this to school personnel and so we called it ADD, which is something we figured they would really like. Avoid, deny, defend, okay? But it, it pertains to everybody in, in all walks of life. If you find yourself in one of these situations, ADD is uh, the thing we want you to try to, to follow. 
The first is avoid, okay? Avoidance starts early and often. Everywhere you go, if you go to a restaurant, if you're in a shopping mall, if you're at a movie theater, it probably helps you a lot to pay attention to what's going on around you. Um, if you see something about to happen and, and you're noticing that, you can start to kind of formulate a response ahead of time. If it surprises you, you have much less time to be able to formulate a response and you become reactive to what's going on uh, probably later in the game than you could have been if you'd had situational awareness. Know where the exits are because avoidance really is going to end up being if there's a problem going on over there, I want to go over there. Okay? So you've got to get out of the problem. When you get away from the problem, you're not involved in it anymore and that's a good thing. That means less people that we need to come in and try to save and less people that need rescuing. All right? So avoidance is simply knowing what's going on around you, making sure that if something is about to happen, you, you can kind of key up on that and get away from it, remove yourself from it. Uh, don't get caught up in it. Know where the exits are and know how to get there, okay? Uh, deny, now that's one that we're gonna spend a little bit more time on. If you cannot avoid being a target or being a victim of this violence that has just erupted, you need to find a strong point, some place that you can fortify and you can defend yourself inside of and keep them away from you. Deny them access to you and those around you. So we'll look for rooms that um, don't have a whole lot of openings. We'll look for places that don't have a lot of windows or doors or anything to it. One way in, one way out type things. Um, and we'll look for good, sturdy con uh, construction. If, uh, if we're in a classroom and something goes on, we may just stay in that classroom because they're built pretty solid. Uh, that's not always the case. Uh, sometimes like in the Mumbai and uh, Bezlan type situations, staying inside the building sometimes is the worst thing to do because that's exactly where they want to keep you and it keeps us from being able to rescue you. So uh, again, that would default back to avoid, if you will, if you know that this is a very coordinated and sophisticated attack. Um, but sometimes sheltering in place may be your best or only option. If you've got doors, you need to close them, you need to lock them and you need to take things and barricade behind it, okay? Put as much between you and the attacker as possible. Anything you can find, you need to try to barricade yourself and shelter in place, all right? At that point, you've done about everything you can to try to avoid being a target or deny access to where you're at. The last thing, and this is really gonna be important, be prepared to defend yourself, okay? If we're not scared enough yet, we, we ought to be, and it really is a matter of life and death, your life or death. So it's extremely important for us to get aggressive and start focusing on survival and focusing on winning and focusing on trying to avoid being an easy target for whoever's coming after you. You putting this stuff in their way, these doors, desk chairs, bookshelves, whatever you've put behind this door, may be enough to slow them down, may not be enough to stop them. So slowing them down is good enough, but what happens when they finally do get inside here? What are they gonna do? They're gonna, they're gonna victimize you, they're gonna hurt you, they're gonna kill you, they're gonna hurt those around you and kill those around you. We can do something about that. You have a room full of people and you have one attacker, that's a lot of people that you can throw at one person, you can take that person down, you can make that person stop what they're doing. Just the four of you right here, that's a formidable enough force for anybody that is out here doing this and they walk up on you guys, you should be able to defend yourselves collectively. You should be able to defend yourselves. So you've got to have that mindset. That mindset is going to spur the action. If you got the wrong mindset, I can teach you a lot of things, but you're not going to do it. So get aggressive, get angry, take it personal because it is personal at this point. Be prepared to defend yourself, okay? What in this room do you think you could defend yourself with. Do you see anything in here you could use? There you go, trash cans, fire extinguishers. You've got backpacks, books. What's inside those backpacks? You've got pencils, pens, things that are sharp. You've got chairs, you may have tables. If you have anything that could be used as a projectile or as an impact weapon, start thinking about using it that way. And you've got numbers in your and to your benefit on your side. It's gonna be very, very difficult for one person to take out the four of you unless you get under a desk and just play dead. That doesn't work. We've seen that happen before. 
Uh, that's it's a natural fear-based response, but that doesn't work when somebody wants to come in and try to take you down. You have backpacks, you probably have books in those backpacks. What I'm gonna teach you also is, take your backpacks and if you have books, you probably wanna start wearing them when this situation goes on to the front like this. Those books inside there will do a lot to stop or slow down most rounds, pistol rounds, that will be shot at you. So this is a, if you, for lack of a better description or an analogy, this is almost a poor person's field expedient plate carrier right now. Okay, so hopefully you're taking a lot of classes, you'll have a lot more books and it'll help you out a lot more. Uh, I don't like um, some of the things I have to tell you to do, but this is a true life and death situation. Um, it's ugly, it's painful, but it's gonna be a lot more so and it's gonna be a lot easier for them if we just curl up under a desk and hope that they just walk by us. They don't do that anymore. Get in, get inside. Get inside, close the door, close the door. Barricade it, barricade it. There you go, there you go. Up against the door, up against the door. Get your backpacks, get your backpacks. Get your backpacks. There he is. Get that gun, get the gun, grab it, grab it. Good, good, break, break. All right, everybody put their stuff down. You can grab your bags if you will. All right, let's head on out. Good exercise, good exercise. Woo! You all right? Well, I'll tell you what, I don't normally wear the fist suits, but I'm kind of glad I had the extra padding today. Yeah, they had your number. They avoided, they tried to deny access, they definitely defended, and I like the use of the improvised tool as well. Awesome. John, you certainly prepared them for dealing with an active shooter as best they could. Step us through again the high points of what they just did. Try to avoid it first and foremost. Try to avoid being in the area or avoid being part of the problem. If you can't, find a place to defend yourself, and once you get there, lock it down the best you can. Put everything you can between them and you. At that point, be prepared to defend yourself, and then the rest is just going to happen. Yeah, and again, they certainly were prepared. There were desks. I, I got a glimpse of the fire extinguisher coming in. I was glad I was wearing the extra padding and the fist suit for sure. Listen, man, great job. Really appreciate everything you're doing for law enforcement, yes, including sir. the immediate aftermath, the alert facility, giving civilians the opportunity to understand how to avoid, deny, and defend as well. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you. And thank you for watching SWAT Magazine TV.